Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you're watching another episode of Crypto Hot Seat on Token Metrics TV. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to Token Metrics on YouTube. We are here to find the most interesting people in crypto and help them get their stories out. We've got a pretty good one today. I'm joined by Mr. Eric Finman. Eric is purportedly one of the youngest crypto millionaires in the world. He's got a very uh, long and interesting entrepreneurial history. And boy, does this guy love freedom. Eric, please say hello to everybody. Hey, so nice to meet you, Dylan. And hop on. Uh, I, you're an eminently Googleable dude. And one of the <laughs> first things that jumped out at me as I was doing a little bit of research into you was you made a bet with your parents. Basically, the nature of this was if you can become a millionaire by the time it's good, by the time you're supposed to go to college, then you don't have to go to college. Is, have I got that right? Yeah, exactly. So it was actually like uh, I made, uh, 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 I had, I wanted to drop out of school. I didn't like school, was not a fan of it, did not fit in. And then, uh, and then I guess as part, I was 15 years old. And as part of that deal, I guess with my parents to drop out at 15 years old was that, um, and, and, uh, was that, uh, you, you have to go back to school by the, when you're 18, if you are not, if you don't like, and the bet was a million dollars. If you don't make them, if you're not a millionaire by the time you're 18, then you have to go back to school. And that was the bet. So I understand that your primary way of getting to that $1 million mark, you were just investing in Bitcoin, yeah? Yeah, my uh, grandmother had uh, given me $1,000 for my scholarship uh, uh, to go to school, to go, <laughs> go to college. And, uh, and I guess I, I was actually 12 years old at the time. And instead of putting that into a scholarship fund, I guess I stole it from that bank account and, and, and bought Bitcoin with it. And that was Bitcoin was about 10 bucks at the time. Uh, so that cut me about give or take 100 coins. And then I spent every day just mowing lawns, trying to, you know, uh, uh, buy low, sell high, you know, make bets and, sure. and get any extra money I could to, to, to be able to get more of it. So this was all happening, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old. You you already had a sense of like, ah, Bitcoin, this is a this is going to be my thing. Is that right? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it was, yeah, I, when I first heard about Bitcoin, it was at this protest, actually, it was some people were arrested for dancing at the Jefferson Memorial. So, uh -huh. uh, 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 and then that was like a, a big libertarian thing. It was a guy named Adam Kokesh, if people remember him, and, and uh, he got arrested. So he all wanted to go protest that. And then I heard about Bitcoin there um, because some guy had this orange shirt. Uh, on with a B on it that looked like a dollar sign. And actually, we were like in the middle of running from the, the riot police because it was a, an, an intense protest. Sure, sure. And, uh, and then I was like, what's that? And he was like, it's Bitcoin, man. It's, it's going to end Wall Street, bro. And he ran off. And then, um, uh, and then yeah, went up, look, looked it back, used that $1,000. Um, put into Bitcoin. And then, yeah, I was like, you know, me, you know, you kind of, kind of hope, you know, at the time back in 2011, you think like, I, I really felt I was looking at something amazing and being into something amazing, but you know, you kind of think it'll be worldwide successful in the same way you think like world peace will happen. You kind of hope it'll happen, but you, you know, not sure if it actually will, but it ended up, you know, that ended up actually happening and, 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 uh, and doing well. And that's what I, I, I wished for. And, and, and it's been an incredible achievement. Yeah. So as you were basically building up your Bitcoin bags, were you paying any attention to altcoins at all? Like when Ethereum popped onto the scene? Was that interesting? I remember to that. You? Yeah, I remember that. Um, I was, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I put a little bit into Litecoin like back in the day because that was like the thing to do. Um, and, uh, you know, Bitcoin was gold and Litecoin was silver and that was the mm -hmm. thinking. Um, but yeah, I remember Ethereum actually back when it came out. Like I remember the original launch video and I was in an Uber actually in San Francisco um, uh, when I first heard about it. And they're like, oh, there's this thing named Ethereum, this thing called Ethereum. You should look into it. And yeah, I had heard about it. Um, I didn't get into it right away and I got into it a little bit later. But yeah, it was, was incredible. So I understand that you, uh, upon selling $100,000 worth of Bitcoin, you dropped out of high school at the age of 15, but you mm -hmm. dropped out of school to start an education startup. Could you talk yes. a little bit about that? And it seems contradictory. Help us understand. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love learning. Um, and uh, so yeah, I dropped out of high school because I, I hate school, but love learning. And, uh, and then, yeah, I, I want to I was I was taking Spanish lessons, you know, over Skype online. And that was like before 
everybody was doing everything remote. So I wanted to create a website where you could type in any subject you wanted to learn and find someone to teach you that over video chat. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I dropped out of high school and basically created a, and you know, one of the first online schools in a way. Um, and you could use it for tutoring, full-time learning, whatever you want. Um, and then, yeah, started that uh, and then eventually sold that company. Um, and then uh, that added that money added to my, my Bitcoin cost. I was going to say, I understand you sold your company for Bitcoin. Is that right? Yes, I did. I did. I sold my company for Bitcoin and I, I had the option to take it cash or Bitcoin. I was like, hell yeah, Bitcoin all the way. So yeah, very, um, very interesting, man. Yeah, exactly. exactly. How, how did you... Uh... <laughs> I mean, this is a crypto native uh, piece of media that we're creating right here. But even as I'm speaking to you, you just seem like you you were sure you were sure this was a thing well before many other people were. And your youth at the time is pretty interesting because there were, you know, 30 year olds, 50 year olds and so on. People who really, really genuinely knew the financial world and ha had had careers in it. And they were maybe even scratching their heads, if not being downright skeptical. But it just seems like despite your youth, you knew full on like, oh, this is it. This is going to make me rich. Yeah. And make me rich and, you know, and change the world. And I think, uh, and I think, you know, blockchain technology is so important. I think with, you know, especially the United States, you know, cracking down on, on a lot of, you know, even back then, right. I mean, even before Bitcoin, I was familiar with something called Liberty Dollar. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if people remember that, but that was like one of the first alternative currencies. And it was like, going back to the gold and silver standard, some guy at a warehouse, you could store your gold. And then they, they like arrested that guy and, and threatened him. Like, I don't know if he was like life in prison or if they say, if you shut it all down, you're fine. And that's why, you know, Bitcoin was invented, right? Was what mm -hmm. blockchain technology was invented and why Satoshi's anonymous was anyone at the time that started an alternative currency was like thrown in prison and, and shut down. And that's the beauty of, of Bitcoin and, and so many other kind of, cryptocurrencies and blockchain based technologies is that it's it's really a beautiful thing that you know the US cracking down on a lot of freedoms um the world cracking down on a lot of freedoms you know that that this technology exists to, to give people hope um in many ways well yeah so you're kind of you're teeing me up to ask you about your latest venture you know we we talked a little bit about your uh, about Botangle back in the day but your latest uh uh piece of business is called Freedom Phone which mm -hmm. basically uh, from what i understand this stands in direct opposition to everything iOS more or less if if, yep. if i could put it in a sound bite that's about exactly. right yeah exactly yeah so yeah i mean i i guess i got into crypto because that was contrarian and and was a very important technology and and uh and you know i i started the freedom phone um because uh uh, uh you know i just see that app stores are so strict on um, these days you know they're they're banning let's say political projects like parlor to people that don't pay enough pay up enough like Fortnite. um mm -hmm. and i wanted to create i guess you could have the best software in the world, even a lot of crypto apps so Freedom Phone, it's kind of a very, you know, partisan project in a way, although I don't think it should be because it's it's just meant to provide privacy and security in, in an app store that is uh, un, uncensored um, and all of that. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so many crypto projects, they like, hey, we can't get on the uh, the Apple or even Google Play stores. So they are submitting to our app store now directly these crypto apps that are a little bit more complicated than your basic wallet. So, I mean, just just the duopoly in app stores and, and phone hardware is, is just an operating systems. It's just awful. So that's why I want to start the freedom phone. Yeah. So can you give us a little bit of a big picture here? I understand that um, basically the price of entry is buy this phone. Is that a, a, a fork of an Android operating system? Yeah. So we forked, we looked at forking Linux and we looked at forking Android and we wanted to be able to kind of still have all the mobile apps that like Android phones have. So, um, so we went with Android, um, and then, you know, we, uh, we, we basically, we forked Android, um, acid washed all the Google stuff out. Um, my CTO, he can get my, uh, get in my, my previous iPhone in like 10 minutes and all of that with, even with the Pasco and everything, he's way smarter than my head and I can't explain, but he, he's someone that I've known for years, um, and then put in really top notch. Uh, cybersecurity stuff. We silo every single app. So even if you download malware onto this phone, even malware we're not familiar with that hasn't come out yet, um, it actually won't work. And we've tested this out with with many different types of common phone malware because malware can get not just in Android phones, but iPhones and not just laptops, but it's crazy. And then uh, 
uh, so we did that. And then, uh, uh, yeah, so we silo every app on its own little digital island, digital bubble. We have um, uh, basically this, uh, we have basically like uh, uh, an app in there which you can turn off all the different connections, not just individual apps, um, like, you know, you can do a normal phone, but turn off literally every single uh, uh, network or, or any uh, uh, that is going through your phone, like not just for eyes and anything, but like, for example, when we were testing out this phone, actually, when we put kind of our security software on this, like literally it didn't even give you access to the internet because it accidentally was blocking everything, every single mm. network connection, everything. And we had to go and fix that and give you the option to turn on and off what you like and don't like. But yeah, and we preload a crypto wallet on there, um, which is amazing. Um, we're giving even $50 in crypto. Uh, uh, recently we gave people a crypto drop, uh, just $50 to spend on crypto preloaded onto the wallet there. So that's really cool. So it has like the kind of some of that, uh, uh, you know, free speech on cancel anti-cancel culture element to it. But then we also, mm -hmm. my crypto roots are in there as well. So I want, I want to ask you about two specific, uh, recent current events. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear your take on the recent Bitcoin ETF news. And then we got to talk about this Facebook whistleblower stuff, man. I suspect yeah. you have some, some, yeah, interesting points of view there. So what, what, what was your experience of the Bitcoin ETF news over the weekend? Yeah. I mean, I thought that was, that was interesting and it just kind of shows, uh, uh, that in my, that, that this kind of world, it's getting more legitimacy, even with these small steps and all of that. And, mm -hmm. and uh, that, that's why I feel like I've almost been, been kind of um, a little bit, I feel like I, although I'm young, I feel like I've, I've, I've been a veteran in the space because I'm, I'm almost 23 now. I'm an old man um, and all of that. And then like one week I turned 23 and then I've been in it since I was 12 years old. So about 10, 13 years um, and all that. So it's like, I feel, I feel it's, it's, I've, I've almost become slightly less passionate about crypto personally, just because it's like, it's gaining actually a lot more legitimacy, even with, you know, two steps forward, one step back type situations uh -huh. and all of that. Um, and it's just, just been gaining so much more legitimacy and is really becoming a legitimate tool. And I hope to see it like so many people smarter than me are, are, are working on this space and, and, and doing things from all the way, like, you know, Coinbase and Gemini, which are very kind of, goal of, of consumer friendly regulated exchanges to people doing great DeFi stuff, to, you know, Bitcoin ETFs happening and, and also sometimes, you know, not happening and, and all that. And it's interesting. So let's change gears to the Facebook whistleblower. I mean, mm -hmm. it seems like it seems like this person is saying things that we kind of already knew. Ba mm -hmm. Basically, it boils down to Facebook doesn't give an F about uh, what it does or how it might affect the world. Mm -hmm. Um how do you fight something as big and, and and how do you fight something like Facebook? Maybe Freedom Phone is part of the equation there. I don't know. I mean, uh, I think yeah, blockchain based social media is is really the future for that type of stuff. I mean, I think because I ultimately that whistleblower, although you know, had some good criticisms about Facebook, ultimately they that that was the I think her solution was more censorship, not not less. Um, and I think that's that's my main qualm with Facebook is that they they a, they filter their algorithm and they censor people and and that's what there's so many great blockchain based social media projects that I think are fantastic um, and all that uh, and yeah could you throw a name or two out there if someone wants to look into one um, I I guess I guess one of my favorites I don't know if they've gone completely blockchain based but I know they have. Uh, their, their chat they ended up converting over, but Minds is a really good one um, mm. and all of that. And then there's 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 more. I'd say that there's not one. The, the main problem with blockchain-based social media is, is the good thing about it is that it allows everything. And then the bad thing about it is that it allows everything. Um, and then that, thus there can be legal stuff that comes with that, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, there's there's some that I would recommend, but they, they, they allow it everything the good and the bad and, and i just don't want to give my endorsement at this point because fair enough fair enough. yeah, yeah so yeah. um but i mean i i think that i think there's i think being able to choose um like having blockchain based social media and that's completely anonymous monero style whoever whoever started that and 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 is completely off the grid um uh but you know people can create like companies on top of that that are like public filters on top of that, that say, Hey, we're, we're this, but we filter out all the illegal stuff. And then, but, but it's still all there if you want it, I guess. Um, but, but kind of to be able to make it consumer friendly, I think that, that, that's what would need to be done. But I think that's really important. And Facebook, they're, they're a terrible 
organization and and uh and i'm kind of glad to see that whistleblower but then also her solution was more censorship and you see that the uh um jen pisaki's pr firm like the 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 biden white house press secretary yeah her pr firm is also the whistleblowers pr firm and she has a whole army of consultants and pr people all around her that are you know not just doing it to her uh, helping her out of the good of their hearts they have their agenda of trying to pressure facebook to censor people more but facebook will probably will definitely eventually give in all the way at some point and that's why projects like freedom phone and blockchain based social media apps are are really important are you optimistic about the future generally speaking uh you know i i, I would say i used to say yes you know and all that to that question and I and and I, I guess it's complicated. Um, I would say uh, I I I think I I I've been spending a lot more time in D.C. because I guess I've been getting in more interested in politics. Um, mm-hmm. Right before COVID happened, we introduced this crypto bill. It's called the Cryptocurrency Act of 2020. Capital shut down three days later, so kind of killed that unfortunately. Oh, wow, yeah. But it was uh, it was a great crypto bill. But yeah, I, I guess like meeting all these top uh, political people and politicians, it's pretty. All these people are pretty immoral and and uh, and incompetent. Like you know, you think of like the Roman Senate, right? Meaning as like meeting a Roman senator, you would think you'd find kind of some wisdom, you know, some intelligent wisdom there. But but if you actually look it up, most senators uh, and politicians' chief of staffs were Hollywood agents beforehand, but couldn't make it. And and that's people don't realize that the amount of Hollywood agents that became politicians' chief of staff for you know is 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 crazy, um, yeah. and all it, that. So image and message manipulation, perhaps that's yeah. a useful skill to have in in that field. Exactly, but a lot of it is not even super intelligent, you know, like image, you know, and all that. And it's just kind of I I actually I guess spending more time in in Mordor, DC. <laughs> it's kind of been somewhat depressing um and all that because it, it's really it's really a really kind of a sick culture um but then also politics is really important i mean politics shut down the entire planet earth you know whether for good or bad up to you what you want to decide on that um but shut down entire there's not one country i don't think that ever shut down other than maybe a few states in the united states and like somalia you know, or something like that. Right. And, yeah. and it's just, and it's just crazy how, how politics can, can, can change someone. I think uh, quoted, I think Joe Biden back in like the seventies when he was a Senator. And then there was someone saying, Oh, you know, free speech, you know, da, da, da. and then, and then him as a, as kind of a junior Senator at the time was like, well saying, Hey, us in DC can take that away if we want to and all that. And uh, I don't know if he was saying that as a, as a good or a bad thing, but that was that was interesting to me is, is politics can really affect the world. And um, but then seeing the people at the top, it, it's just kind of really stupid incompetency, vain and yeah. and a moral degeneracy. And it's kind of like uh, uh, depressed me. But also, yeah, blockchain based technologies are are, I guess, a solution to that and kind of going to a Web3 in a way world where people can live anywhere and 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 collaborate with people that you know like some some guy i'd only met him recently i'd worked with him remotely for five years and never met him in real life um and all of that so it was kind of uh for five years and that's the beauty of the internet and everything but yeah there's a lot of potential to do so many good things a lot of potential yeah. energy and people are doing that with 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 blockchain in this world so I, I hear all your criticisms of uh, people at the top levels of politics, and I can't say that I disagree very much. <laughs> yeah. But I want to pose a, a kind of a, a devil's advocate question here. Do you do you see anybody doing anything good? And I guess I want to specifically call out uh, Cynthia Loomis. Yeah, Cynthia Loomis one of the, is one of the most crypto friendly senators you've ever seen. Yeah, and I think and I think that's that's why I, I guess I deal with with Mordor is, uh, is, is because I actually think it's, it's not necessarily good, um, or desirable to give up on the political system. Like I, I have some, some anarcho-capitalist roots there that, that felt like that. And that's part of the reason I got into Bitcoin and yeah. I've kind of grown up into kind of like, you know, it's, it's, it's good to kind of try to, to, uh, you know, I, I would, I would have hit punch myself for saying this back in the day, but, you know, change the system from within. And people like Cynthia are great for that. And you see, you know, the uh, Treasury here, they're, they're going to try to crack down. I think there's talk about cracking down on crypto. 
Although, you know, it is blockchain based, but, you know, cracking down on crypto, that would hurt a lot of consumer interest in the United States and normal people getting into it. Right. Um, and this Treasury secretary just seems like they kind of want to go full crackdown on it, from my understanding. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then it's important to be able to get pro crypto and pro freedom people um, into whether it's Democrat or Republican on um, the crypto side, you know, that are supportive. Of, of crypto because it, it, it is it is important. They shut down, politicians shut down entire planet Earth like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they, they can do so much and it's really important. So yeah, I have hope in, in people like Cynthia Loomis and she's really smart and, and great and I've heard many good things. Yeah, awesome. Uh, what What's driving your investment thesis nowadays? I guess, are, are you still any sort of crypto investor or are you mostly just an entrepreneur guy these days? Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, my my crypto investor thesis, again, I feel I feel I've become an old man in the sense in this space. Like, it's just like I've I've there's so many people NFTs I haven't really hardcore gotten into, gotten uh -huh. into a little bit. Um, there's a lot of amazing DeFi stuff that I haven't been like I've gotten into a little bit but I wouldn't feel like I'm an expert on it but I've become an old man in this space and yeah I've gotten a little bit more entrepreneurial I guess I, I got my my fu money and now I want to say fu and that's with with projects like the freedom phone and there's other other I'm kind of more in investing in, in businesses and startups more these days and and you know if one's like a complete decentralized startup that doesn't you know that doesn't have any central entity I'm into that stuff too right but um but yeah I've kind of more into I've the first part of my, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he had bodybuilding and then he went to acting and mm -hmm. all of that. Like, I feel like I've had, uh, uh, I was into crypto investing and now I'm kind of getting a little bit more into venture capital in a way. Yeah. Schwarzenegger also became a governor. So maybe, maybe there's a few careers maybe, for you. After maybe this. a few. I think there's many careers. Life, life is short. You know, Alexander the Great conquered the world by 31. And, and I think, uh, or I think by his like 28, he conquered the world that died and was murdered at 31, but you know, and all of that. But, uh, uh, but yeah, life is long. It just, it just meant as packing into it, but yeah, crypto is, is beautiful and there's way people smarter than me doing stuff. But yeah, I mean, I think, I think uh, Bitcoin is always a good bet. That, but I think it, there's a risk of, of Bitcoin at least dying for for normal people if if we don't if we don't I feel like as a movement invest in in politics and invest mm -hmm. in 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 support of politicians like Cynthia Loomis etc. Because um, I think I think if, if people don't don't solve that 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 would be dead for I'd say normal people and obviously it, it still can exist and that's the beauty of the technology. Um, but that's that's what I try to solve and try to fix. Gotcha. What what kind of advice or words of wisdom might you have for uh, a twelve or thirteen year old kid <laughs> nowadays who's you know loosely aware of crypto? Is this the place to be making a million bucks now if you're starting from let's say a thousand, or yeah, is it or is it something so. different? I think so. I think I think you know. Look, like now, finally, uh, I, I saw a tweet and it was really good. And it was the amount of wealth that is now like with uh, with inheritances being transferred trillions of dollars from boomers mm -hmm. to millennials. And someone said of just 2% of that and it was like trillions of trillions of just 2% of that goes into crypto, which, you know, younger people tend to more see as a, as a, as a legitimate investment. Right. And now older people are seeing it too. Right. And, and have mm -hmm. been, um, but if just 2% of that goes into crypto and goes into the, like that would be that that's huge. Um, and I think, and I think starting, you know, uh, uh, Balaji, and I always butcher his last name, so I'm not going to say it on Twitter and all of that. Balaji is an incredibly smart guy on Twitter um, and, uh, and talks about, you know, just being able to live in the world anywhere that you want, work with people all around the world um, and have, uh, uh, you know, pro proof of ownership, you know, without using patents and being able to collaborate with anybody on, on, on these kind of decentralized projects i think it's amazing and like uh ultimately i would probably ultimately if i did not have maybe some patriotism to the united states i would probably like move you know out of the country and and like live in like you know in in uh in like bali or something and just work remote yeah, yeah. or like vietnam or something i i, I really yeah. like vietnam and, and just so many beautiful beautiful opportunities like that in the world and maybe if not if you're 12 or 13 but if you're 12 or 13 i think i think I, I was hiring people. I had like 15 employees when I was like 15 years old, you know? So, I mean, I think that that was beautiful and they didn't know I was 15. So that's the beauty of, of being, uh, the internet has unlocked the ability to get educated 
um, uh, uh, to your fullest capacity. And in 12, 13, you can be a smart kid at 12 or 13. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, cool. Eric, I want to thank you for sharing some time and insight with us today. Happy early birthday. Oh, thank well, you very much, Dylan. What a life you've already lived and what a life you seem to have ahead of you. It's going to be exciting to be following your story, man. So well, thank you for joining us on the show. It's a pleasure to be on. Thank you so much.